least. For sitting next to me is a gentleman who's just unleashing his first solo venture on an unsuspecting public, the lovable Uncle Ernie, Mr. Keith Moon. Hey, well, welcome to the programme, Keith. Very good to be back. Uh, I mean, I was talking earlier on about Peter's album and the obvious enjoyment that seems to have gone into the making of that one, and I get yes. exactly the same feeling from yours, too. Well, that, uh, that's the feeling that I got when I was making it, and that's the feeling I get when I'm playing it. It's a, a celebration of the, the sort of music I've enjoyed, and that I still sort of hum in the bath or wherever I happen to be humming. And uh, I just wanted to get them down. Mm. How did you put I it together? Again, I mean, had you been wanting to put it together for quite a time? No, I mean, I, it wasn't a burning ambition. I think, and I didn't sort of, well, the other three had done solo albums. What's wrong with you? I mean, it was, it was, I didn't feel any pressure to do it. Uh, it was just, you know, sort of drunken night at the Whiskey Go Go in Los Angeles. <sighs> I mean, it only one. I didn't do it every night. <laughs> Sunday's off. Because they're closed. Yeah. Of course, you'd know all about that, Bob. Yes. Man about town. Sure. Cosmopolitan raver. Absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, you pulled in an enormous number of people too to help you with the album, Keith, didn't you? I had to. Bob. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I mean, uh, off the top of my head... Yes, uh, pick up the sleeve. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was actually a lot of these people I worked with, with um, Lennon and Harry Nelson before on the Pussycats album, uh, Jesse Ed Davis, Danny Cooch, yeah. uh, just those two. Uh, Nielsen, of course, himself, Jim Keltner, Klaus Foreman. Joe Walsh, who was doing his album next door, so I used to go and borrow him occasionally. Yeah. What are you doing at the moment, Joe? Sounds terrible. Come into the studio and see and relax. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Was it hard, though, pulling everybody together no, at the same it, time? Uh, it was, I mean, I, I got it at a very good period. Everybody I knew was in town, and they were all sort of in a recording mood. Uh, so I didn't really have to sort of go out of my way and phone people up specifically, you know. So I said, you know, they were all down there anyway. Los Angeles is very much like that. Once you start recording, you get in the studio, uh, and you, you just find that everybody, you know, 10, 11 o'clock, and everybody's in there. Mm. I had to let out the studio next to mine as a bar, and I recorded several albums in there with the people and their families. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dogs and everything in there, so I just sort of kept the tape running in that studio and then would go in and grab any sort of luminary that came through the door and say, hello mate, I haven't seen you for ages, no, I've never met you. <laughs> you fancy playing on an album. Because <laughs> <laughs> you think of yourself really now, Keith, don't you, as an LA resident? Yes, I do. Yeah. Why did you move out there? Uh, it wasn't for the usual sort of tax reasons, although they, they are a benefit, I must admit. Uh, I got very bored with London. And uh, I, I found it to be in a very sort of low energy state. A lot of television programs, I saw a lot of uh, music papers I read were sort of very, well, the television looked like a very bad French variety show. And the uh, music papers were either very schneid, uh, they don't sell records anyway, so I really don't know why I buy them. Uh, they were just, they, they, I just got a bit fed up. Mm. And I wanted to go, you know, I just wanted to take take me somewhere else yeah. for a change. Yeah. So you really decided to put the album together when you got there? Yeah, I didn't have any thoughts of just going out there specifically to, to mm. do an album. Mm. I mean, it just sort of came about while I was there and while I was with me friends and I said, well, let's, let's play. Because mm. mm. yeah. the other thing about sort of recording things, Keith, I, mean, I, I listened to and really enjoyed the radio programmes you did on Radio 1. I did or, too, yeah. I mean, 18 months ago now, wasn't it? I mean, are there plans to put those together? In any kind of Funny you should say that, Bob. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I found we, we did have plans, actually, on the... Oh, we, we, John Walters, who wrote and produced uh, those shows, and I were talking about doing uh, the possibility of doing some kind of album using some of the scripts that we hadn't put out on the air mm. for one reason or another. And so we decided, you know, to uh, to do an album then, about eight, two years ago, two months two. Uh, but because of Bo because of everybody's commitments to everybody else, we couldn't quite get together and push the project through. Mm. But we're doing that now. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so uh, John Waters has been writing stuff, and I've been writing stuff, mainly letters to John Waters asking where his stuff is. <laughs> 
And there's a film in the afternoon too, Keith, isn't there? The it's Ringo. Sam, yeah, Ringo yeah. and I uh, we were approached by Sam Peckinpah to do a movie. Mm. In India. Yes. Probably film it in Mexico. What form will that take? Do you know yet? Uh, no, I've seen a couple of the, you know, we have, we've had script meetings and everything. We're going to production uh, next month sometime. Uh, we won't start shooting for a few months after that. Mm. But uh, with, with Sam, with Sam anyway, you never know quite what's mm. in the offing. Because he's like, he's very like Ken Russell. Mm. He comes up with these sort of ideas, you know, and just sort of will change an entire sequence. So, you know, I just sort of got to, I've got to sort of load of bits. And Sam has got to put it all together. Yeah, is... we're running out of time, actually, kids, but we must touch on the Who before we start. Now, because the album started again now, there, isn't it? You've got a couple of tracks done. Yes. Yes. Um, that's that's the reason I I came back was to do the new Who album mm. and to uh, find out exactly you know, what sort of tour dates we've got. I understand we're doing the, um, some dates in England and the rest of Europe, and then we go to uh, to America. August, September. So I figure that the dates that we're doing in this country will be early August. Mm. And they'll probably coincide with the release of the latest album. Yeah. Oh, good. Funny that. Yes. Look forward to that, though, Keith. And thanks for coming in. My pleasure, Bob. Thank you. Uh, Keith Moon. And we're turning the clock back now to 1960.